Okay, so welcome to your first Isadora tutorial from the Cahoots Creation Studio. Uh, what I'll be doing with you today in this tutorial is showing you the general basics of how Isadora works, and we're going to set up a live stream because I'm going to use that live stream as we move forward in tutorials so you can actually see me uh, and I can show you the programming as we go through to make it just a little bit more personal, the whole eye contact thing. This program is primarily used for projection design and theater. You can use it for a lot of other things, though. If you're getting into MIDI controlling, you can actually control lights with it. Pretty much anything you can send a value to can be controlled through Isadora, so it's very handy. Um, in the tutorials that we'll be doing, we'll mainly be just showing you how to use it for basic show operation and maybe do a couple of the different effects. Now, there's a lot of tutorials that are available through uh, Isadora. Uh, the creator of this, Mark, he's done a ton of amazing ones. So we'll just be giving you some basic ones that you can get a feel for it. The first thing we're going to do is just take a look at the program. So as you can see here, we've got this top little scroll uh, here, this little menu key. So all video, general video, these are the different ones. Now, you'll see as I'm going through, the bottom menu is changing. So this is just a way of kind of coding down uh, and, sorry, more uh, cutting down what this giant menu is here. Now this is everything. This is all the video functions within Isadora. As you can see, there are a lot. So you can say, go into video sources and you can see, okay, we're just gonna use video sources. Video renderers, likewise, just the renderers. Uh, audio, MIDI, generators, all that kind of thing. So. What we're going to do here is actually start by looking at our interface to build the live stream. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take a look at this top menu here. Now, you'll see there's different options. File obviously gives you your general feel going down there. I realize some of it's blocked off by this screen recording device here, which I'll just pop to the side. Uh, you can, of course, import media into Isadora, and if you import media, it will then create this little list here. So if I were to go into the desktop, and if I were to look at, say, any material that we've got on this massive desktop here, we can select from it and choose whatever we like. It will import it in to the appropriate file, video, audio, MIDI, pictures, 3D models. Generally, we'll be working with video and audio files. Now. We'll see as we go through that sometimes some audio files will come through as video files and there is a way around that and there's different functions which makes it a little bit more useful depending on what exactly you have in mind. So right now let's not worry about that. Let's continue just going through this top here. View of course is just your view menu. Scenes. Now scenes becomes important. You can actually insert a scene into Isadora and as you can see we've got Untitled 1 here and Untitled. Uh, to change the name, you just double-click uh, on the scene itself, depending on what kind of mouse you have. In this case, I've actually had to right-click to do it. And um, we can call this whatever you like. So we'll call this scene one. And we'll likewise call this scene two. Generally speaking, I do like to have a scene zero, so we've got a very neutral thing to work with. So I'm actually going to insert a scene now. So I'm going to go to Scenes, I'm going to insert a scene. As you can see, it's actually put it in between scene one and scene two, so I'm just going to move that over. You can simply just drag and drop it. And now we've got a renamed scene zero. So nothing's going to be on scene zero. Now, let's continue just going through. We've got Actors, Search for an Actor. Now this is a very useful thing. Search for an actor means we simply just go to the search button up here. Now there's an easy little shortcut to that, which is if I'm here in scene one, I know one of the things I'm going to need in this is a projector. So I can either select from the general video uh, and scroll down until I get to projector, uh, or, sorry, that actually be on video renderers, projectors right here. Or I can just double click and start typing for what I like. And projector just pops up here, so there we go, I've got a projector. Now, I'm trying to run a live stream, so one of the things I'm going to need to do is make sure that I'm actually 
streaming to the computer. So I'm going to go to input here and uh, I'm going to just simply go to live capture settings. Now I've actually already gone through and set this up, uh, but you will actually have to uh, click show preview and start the live capture. Now the one that I'm using here is a built-in device, which is the FaceTime HD camera, just the camera in the Mac. And the resolution's quarter size, the quality is minimum. Now I've kept the resolution a quarter size and the quality to minimum just because it lets it stream a little bit better. Uh, this is a case of speed. If you are doing a very high tech show that you need really good quality, as long as you have the processor power to do it, then it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and with the computer that we're using here at the Creation Studio, it's not really a problem at all either. But just for simplicity's sake and as a matter of habit, uh, I tend to keep it lower. So we've got the live capture going. Start of the live capture. Now the uh, projector is one of the things that you're really going to find useful if you're going to be doing video design. Essentially, it just means it's going to actually give you an output. So let's now connect something to this projector. Uh, the basic function of Isadora is a piping system. And uh, I'm just going to quickly bring up what's called a video in watcher. So you can see right here, the video in watcher. So what the video in watcher is doing is it knows that it's connected to the video camera, which is now actually the camera in the computer, but you could of course use a different camera. And this is gonna send this signal, the video out signal, right over to the video in connection right here. So very simple system, connect the dots more or less, and that's basically how you're gonna work. So now this is actually set up. It's streaming, I can actually see the little light on, but of course you can't see me. So what we're gonna do is click on output. And we're gonna say show stages. And once we've done that, there I am. So that is step one. Um, we're going to use this as we go through, but just so you know, the video in Watcher is going to be in the next few scenes that we're going to make. Uh, now, one thing I'm going to show you here, which is a nice little quick fix. Um, if you've got multiple scenes, because I'm going to show you here, if we go to scene zero, now the screen's blank. I'm still here, the screen's blank. It doesn't know to actually send a signal. Scene one, I'm back. Scene two, I'm gone. One, back. So what we can do to actually make this a little bit easier is we can either go through this whole function and rebuild the whole thing again, or we can just copy. And what I've done there is just selected it and then copied as I would in Microsoft Word or whatever you may be using. So Command-C on a Mac, I think it's control C on a PC and control V or command V, which did not work in my case. I'm just going to click paste. And there we go. So now in scene two, this is two, uh, we have the same as in scene one. So when I go from scene one to scene two, no change. Well, a slight little blip there. You can see that that's just the actual changing of scenes. So there we go. We've got our video, in Watcher, we're setting up a live stream to Isadora.